Hi everyone and good morning. Today we are going to cover topic 9.1.7, role of the ribs, the internal and external intercoastal muscles, and the diaphragm. So before we get into that, let's do a summary of our previous lesson. So before this, we looked at features of gas exchange surfaces and we looked at the fact that we want to have a large surface area and that is provided by having millions of alveoli and this gives a large surface area for a gas exchange. Having this large surface area also creates this faster diffusion of gases across the surface. Secondly, we want to have the feature to have a thin surface. For example, walls of the alveoli are one cell thick, and even the walls of blood capillaries are also one cell thick. This is for quick and easy diffusion of gases in solution, and also this gives us a short diffusion distance. There's also a lot of supply of blood, and this is provided by the having the alveoli that has blood capillaries all surrounding it, and this helps to also make transport and exchange of gases more rapid between the alveoli and the blood. And lastly, we also need a supply of air. Alveolar, alveolar cavity contains gas that is inhaled and exhaled. So having this good ventilation by the lungs gives this diffusion gradient so that we can actually have um, the gas exchange happening and having walls inside of the alveoli are also covered with a layer of water or a layer of moisture that helps to dissolve gases so that they can also be exchanged. So our learning objective today is quite long and it might be a little bit complicated, but please bear with me today. So it is 9.1.7, which is to explain the role of the ribs, the internal and external intercoastal muscles and the diaphragm in producing volume and pressure changes in the thorax, causing the movement of air in and out of the lungs, aka breathing. So our step to success today firstly is to explain the action of ribs, intercoastal muscles, and the diaphragm in breathing. Secondly, to relate how they can affect volume and pressure changes in the thoracic cavity. Thirdly, to state the effect of each on air movement between atmospheric air and the body. So firstly, let's try to define what is breathing in and breathing out, and how is breathing different from respiration. So most people would actually equate the two of them, breathing and respiration, the same. However, they are actually different processes. For example, in respiration, it is a chemical process. Respiration is the breakdown of food to release energy. And this only occurs in the cells, specifically the mitochondria. And this is a totally unconscious action that you can't control. However, breathing is a physical process, it's not a chemical process, and this includes inhalation and exhalation, that's breathing in, breathing out, and not anything to do with respiration, which is a chemical process. And it can also be controlled, which is also a conscious action. So what we mean by this is that although most of the time you don't really control your breathing, but you also have the ability to control that as well. However, respiration, you can't really tell your cells to release more energy. Um, they pretty much just do what they want, um, depending on the environment. So, And this depends on internal environment only. However, breathing actually ac interacts with external environment, which is the atmosphere. So these are the differences between respiration and breathing. So how does air actually move in and out of our body? Air moves from high pressure to low pressure. So air moves into and out of our lungs because of this pressure gradient force. So during breathing in, there are two names of breathing in that you need to know. It can be called inhalation. It can also be called inspiration. And breathing out is also called exhalation or expiration. All of these breathing in and breathing out really depends on the pressure gradient between atmospheric air that is outside our body and the thoracic cavity, which is inside our body. So what is the thoracic cavity actually? 
So this part over here, this is the thoracic cavity. Um, this is from the side view and this is from the front view. So if you guys remember, we have our thorax, oh wait, sorry, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. So the thoracic cavity is basically the space inside our body, which is this part right here, which also includes where our lungs are actually sitting. So pressure gradient and air movement. So during inhalation and exhalation, air movement, thoracic cavity, and atmospheric air, it actually changes. So how does it actually change? So, so during exhalation, air moves out of our lungs, and therefore the thoracic cavity has to have a low volume. Having this low volume means that pressure will be high. I think the law here is Boyle's law. I think you'll learn this in physics or maybe you have learned it. And atmospheric air should be the opposite. Um, but let's try to mostly focus on thoracic cavity because that will definitely help us to look at the biology part of it. So inhalation is when you want to move air into the lungs. Therefore, thoracic cavity has to be in high volume so that the pressure is low. Remember that air moves from high pressure to low pressure. So during inhalation, the volume of the thoracic cavity should be high. And therefore, atmospheric air would just be the opposite. So what we're looking at over here is the movement of or the difference in pressure. So for example, when we are actually breathing out, um, the remember that air you just have to really put this in your head the fact that air moves from high pressure to low pressure so when you breathe out so that is exhalation you want air to move out of your lungs so that means that pressure here so air moves from high pressure to low pressure so therefore pressure in the thoracic cavity has to be high as compared to the atmospheric air which is outside here because we're breathing out so air has to move out whereas inhalation is the opposite where we have the volume of our thoracic cavity high that means that pressure becomes low so when pressure is low that means that air can move from high pressure from the outside into the low pressure of our lungs So that is the relationship between the pressure gradient and also air movement in and out of our lungs or out and in this case in the video moving inwards. Okay, so we learned about the difference in pressure, um, air pressure gradient, but how do we actually change that? or control that is by actually changing the volume and pressure in the thoracic cavity. So this has to do with the role of the ribs, the intercoastal muscles, and also the role of the diaphragm. Breathing and muscles have a very tight relationship here. So during breathing, you want the lungs to inflate and deflate. And this is due to the action of the muscles which control the thorax. So if you have a look at this video, you can see that the lungs can deflate, which means that it becomes smaller. The volume is smaller and it can inflate, which is the volume getting bigger. And the lungs doesn't do that on its own, actually. It's actually the action of other muscles that form the thorax. So what are these muscles that form the thorax? They include the internal intercoastal muscles, the external intercoastal muscles, and also the diaphragm. So before we look into these parts in detail, I just need you guys to remember the fact that muscles, they have this function and how the carry out their function is that they would contract and they relax. When muscles contract, it means that they shorten. And when they relax, it means that they lengthen or just go back to their original size, which so is longer than when they contract. All right. So ribs and intercoastal muscles are related to each other. 
The ribcage has the ability to swing outwards and inwards, and this is actually due to the intercostal muscles. What we mean by outwards is that if you look at this gif of the bucket, so when the bucket handle moves up, that is equivalent to when our ribs are moving up as well. And it also can move down, so that means that is inwards. So that's what we mean by rib cage moving outwards and inwards. So how does the rib cage move upwards and inwards? It's actually controlled by a pair of antagonistic muscles. Antagonistic muscles are muscles that actually work the opposite of each other, but they work in pairs. So for example, the internal intercostal muscles. So at your rib, you have the internal intercostal muscles, which is like at the inside part of your rib. And you also have the external intercostal muscle, which is at the outside part of the rib. That's why it's called external. So together, they pretty much look like that. So what we mean by antagonistic is if the external intercostal muscles contract, then internal would relax. If internal contracts, then external will relax. So all you have to do mainly is to know what one of them is doing, then you know that the other person, I mean the other muscle is just doing the opposite. So the diaphragm is also a muscle, it can contract and relax. It is made up of muscle tissue and it has two main actions. During contraction, so this is contraction, they actually shorten up so they would become flatter. And when they relax, then they create this dome shape. So having this ability to flatten, contract, and relax dome shape, that also helps to control the volume of the thoracic cavity. And in the end, it will also control the pressure. So this is just a picture of a more realistic diagram. So this is the diaphragm. Just imagine it kind of like an umbrella. So it does when it actually relaxes. So it relaxes to arch upwards. So that's why it's like a dome or like, like an umbrella, like that kind of shape right there, rainbow, a dome shape. That is when they are relaxing. But when they shorten up, so when they contract, they would actually become flatter, hence increasing the volume. All right, so how does the thoracic cavity change during exhalation? So we're going to look at the action of the ribs, intercostal muscles, and also the diaphragm, and what changes do they bring upon. So the ribs, what they do is that they need to swing down. Having to swing down means that they're going to deflate the lungs. So imagine that you have, you're pressing the lungs and also forcing the air to move outwards. So during exhalation, so ribs would swing downwards. Having the swing downwards would help to deflate the lungs. Okay, so what happens to the internal intercostal muscles? So internal intercostal muscles, remember that they control the ribs. So if they want to swing down the rib, what they have to do is they should contract. So imagine it like kind of pulling down. So you want the internal to actually contract. So what we mean by that is over here. So they're pinching on the inwards here. So having to contract the internal intercostal muscles that swings the ribs much more inwards. Lastly, the diaphragm, because you want to reduce um, you, sorry, you want to increase the pressure or reduce the volume of the thoracic cavity. So you want that dome shape to be much more of a dome. So the diaphragm would actually relax. So overall, what you're going to get is something like this. So you have the ribs swinging downwards to deflate the lungs. And this is caused by the contraction of the internal intercostal muscles. And the diaphragm would also relax to have a dome shape so that this overall change would be to reduce the volume of the thoracic cavity. Therefore, pressure would be increased so that you're going to move the air from high pressure here to low pressure outside. So that's exhaling.
So this one, um, we're looking at inhaling, sorry. So please just ignore that. We're looking at changes to the thorax during inhalation. So what happens is that we want the ribs to swing upwards. And swinging upwards will help the lungs to inflate. And the external intercostal muscles, what they do, this time is the external, they would contract so that the ribs would swing outwards. And what does the diaphragm do? The diaphragm would contract so that they flatten. So overall, this action would bring about a, a, an increase in the volume of the thoracic cavity. So to move the ribs upwards, the lungs would inflate, and this is caused by the external intercostal muscles contracting this time. So when they contract, the ribs move upwards. And the diaphragm, because you wanted to increase the volume of the lungs, hence decreasing pressure, they would actually flatten in the end. So that is pretty much everything. So. Our step to success is to explain the actions of the ribs. So we looked at that, intercostal muscles and the diaphragm in breathing. Secondly, relate how they can affect volume and pressure changes in the thoracic cavity. Third is to state the effect of each on air movement between atmospheric air and body. So I'm just going to summarize everything. So overall changes in the thorax during exhalation. So during exhalation, remember that you want air to move from high pressure to low pressure. So air pressure always moves from high pressure to low. So that means that the pressure inside the thoracic cavity has to be high this time. And to do that, to deflate the lungs, you need the volume of the lungs to be reduced. Therefore, that increases pressure and that causes air to move out of the lungs. So how do we do this is that the ribs will move downwards and this is due to the internal intercostal muscles contracting after that the diaphragm would also want to relax to create this very dome shape and overall the volume of the thoracic cavity would decrease so when volume decreases pressure increases that means that air will move out of the lungs and into the atmospheric air during exhalation. All right, so now let's look at the overall changes of the thorax during inhalation. So during inhalation, remember that again, the rule here is that air moves from high pressure to low pressure. So what we want to do is that we want to inflate the lungs. To do this, volume of the lungs should be increased. Therefore, pressure would decrease causing air to move into the lungs because remember high pressure outside and then low pressure on the inside. So how do we increase the volume of the thoracic cavity? Firstly, the ribs would move outwards. This is how this is because the external intercostal muscles contract. And the diaphragm what they do is that they would also contract, therefore making it more flatter a flattened shape instead of a dome shape. So this overall volume of the thoracic cavity would increase, therefore decreasing pressure, and therefore air from the atmosphere will then move into the lungs. And that is what you call inhalation. So I really hope that this is okay for you guys. Um, if you do have any problems, please let me know. You can pause the video and repeat it again and again just to get the idea straight. I know that this is a pretty difficult topic. Um, so don't be afraid to send me a message if you are a bit confused. So thank you guys and please have a good day today. Bye.